Hello and welcome to 101 Ideas for Minecraft Learners. This episode is called Making Things Chunky. Uh, and what I mean by that is we're going to use a little bit of software called Chunky to render uh, Minecraft, your Minecraft builds and make them look incredibly amazing. Um, uh, I'm not kidding with that. Uh, you know, Chunky is a, uh, it's a it's a little 3D render program that will uh, turn your Minecraft worlds uh, and use realistic lighting and do amazing things with them. This is especially useful if you want to if you built something amazing like, like you know I built this look at this amazing house that I built up here uh, and I'm really proud of it and I want to show it off on my website or I want to make a T-shirt out of it or I want to do something uh, where I don't want to put it in a presentation. Uh, maybe I want to uh, for a school report. Or something like that. Uh, for example, I mean, I, I think someone said to me the other day, uh, they've got some children, uh, you know, making this school, and they want to. How do they present that? What would be the really cool way of presenting uh, the, all the kids' hard work that they've been doing? And Chunky might be a, a great way of doing that. So, uh, without further ado, you, you might recognise this. This is uh, my childhood home. There's a video of it. Uh, where I did a reminiscence project so I'm quite proud of it all it's quite a nice little build and what we're going to do we're going to use this as an example and show you how we can use chunky to render this in 3d so uh, what I need to do is actually save and quit quit the game you don't actually need Minecraft to work what you do need is chunky chunky's got its own launcher now which is really useful uh, and it means we can uh, up the memory limit depending on the power of your computer you can actually push this higher or lower I've got it kind of just over the halfway mark uh, and we can show the advanced settings so we can kind of uh, see the Java where the Java is uh, and Java options chunky options I kind of leave it all down there I close the console when chunky exits and uh, check for update you can always check for update the version is the latest so you can check for update let's see if uh, anything's done oh wow look uh, we've got new updates so um, oh, well let's just update to a new version <clears throat> and close that. So that's updated. That that's, this is really really useful. It means that we can just you know just use the launcher, uh, and it just looks like it's a, it's jar, written in Java, so it's very very easy. Uh, and I'll give all the website links below, so you can go and have a look at the website link and download it. Again, it's multi-platform, so it's really good. So let's launch Chunky, and we'll see what it looks like. So here's Chunky, this is what it looks like and you can select your world by going here and you can change your world directory but here are all my worlds down here and of course I've chosen my childhood home which is that so I'm going to load the selected world which is up here which is the last thing I've done and we can move around it and what we're going to do is you can kind of move around it, we can even open this up we can even make this larger or smaller so let's make it kind of large like this and you can see there's an actual village over here as well. So that's the build that I've, I've made over here. So let's just try selecting. What we need to do is we're seeing it from the top down. So kind of a bird's eye view. And I'm going to press left shift and then click and drag. And I click and drag and I kind of make a selection like that. Once I've made a selection, okay, this is the selection that Chunk is going to use. I can, well, if you've made a mistake, you can clear selection, for example. Let's just get over here. Over here. We can also load a scene if we, because we can save these scenes. Uh, but I'm going to just, again, left click, make a selection, and then right click that selection. And it says, please select a directory where Chunky should store scene description files and renders. Um, and I just store it kind of at, at the root, at my, my root uh, area. And then press OK. OK, so keeps that background window open but also opens this little window here now this window is your canvas and its uh, default is 400 by 400 pixels so I'm going to just make that a little bit bigger and I'm going to do um, let's do uh, 1080 by 720 which are kind of a, a HD size and we'll just say set canvas size like this and you can see it opens it up like that and these two windows are very useful so I'm going to keep them open and we've got the scene name my childhood home we've got uh, some tabs up here uh, our first one is the general tab so we can load a scene or we could kind of create a scene or could, you know we can do things like that we can also save this so we can that's how we can revisit this scene later on so if you do want to come back and try different renders on it you might want to do that We've just set the canvas size. We can halve it or double it or make it default. The bigger you double it, the larger it gets. 
the more memory it will use. And remember, we looked at kind of memory uh, within the within the launcher. So just to be careful of that, I've what I find is a kind of a, a 1080 or a 19 by uh, 40 kind of HD size is, is is pretty good, but you can experiment with that. What you'll see is it'll sl either slow down and stop working, uh, or just uh, kind of free feel like it's freezing up. We've got some options here as well. We've got still water, clear water, enable biome colors, and save them once every 500 frames. We'll talk about frames in a minute, and save a snapshot for each dump. Uh, what that means is basically uh, it start when it starts to render, it renders each frame at a time, uh, and uh, as it gets better and better, uh, when you get to about 500, it, it almost looks almost photographic. It's amazing. So let's have a look through our, uh, over here. So I'm going to pull this window up, and I'm going to right click, and I'm going to move, m click and right click, click and drag, and we can kind of see. And I'm going to use the keyboard, the W, S, so the W to move forward. S to move backwards, A to move kind of me sideways, and D to move me sideways as well. And I'm kind of moving through these locks as well. So I can move backwards, I'm moving S at the moment, and then right clicking to drag my my, my camera around a kind of an invisible um, on an invisible tripod, and then I'm gonna press W to go forward, and I'm gonna move my camera around. Let's try and get a kind of a Uh, like that. Let's let's just do that. So you know, find a good place where you think might be interesting, and uh, let's have a look at some lighting. So we've got some lighting. You can see there's some lighting over there. We can go to lighting here, and the first one says emitters. Now emitters are things like torches, uh, glowstone, things like that. Uh, I generally turn my emitters down a bit because sometimes they're a bit too bright, a bit too um, almost crackly. They're, they're too. Uh, they almost pierce the picture a little bit with their kind of intensity. Enable sunlight. Well, we definitely want to enable sunlight, and we have an intensity, so you can make it very bright. Oh, too bright. Lower it down, lower it better now. But about where it is, the default is usually pretty good. Uh, and then we've got the sun azim azimuth and altitude. Uh, so that's like left and right, up and down. So let's push this across the sky and backwards and forwards, and altitude. Back up, you know, sunset or sunrise, etc., etc. So that's the the top of it. So let's put it, push it down a little bit, and let's roll it across the sky. Like, like that might be quite, that might be quite cool. And uh, you know, what I do, uh, as with all, everything, experiment, see what, uh, see what, uh, see what you think. Let's push this around so we get some interesting shadows. Uh, then we've got sky. Now you can actually load a sky map. I'm not going to show you all this in this episode. I generally, uh, you know, a sky map would be uh, clouds and background. At the moment, the default is kind of just this kind of a quite cool kind of uh, blue gray sky, which is quite nice. But you can load, uh, you know, pictures literally of clouds and different types of skies. Uh, but and on the website, there's clear instructions about how to do that. Um, we've got mirror sky horizon, so that's quite good. Enable atmosphere, uh, enable volumetric fog, or enable clouds. Now clouds, there you can see the clouds coming. I generally keep the clouds off. I sometimes put atmosphere in. It depends if you're doing really massive hills and things like that. And volumetric fog is great if you've got kind of an interior cave and you've got maybe sunlight casting through and you want that sunlight to be illuminated, you know, kind of by this kind of mist, if you like. So, uh, to experiment with that, I, I'm going to keep atmosphere on and leave the fog for now. If we do enable clouds, we, can, we again, we've got cloud height, so you can push that up or down. Uh, let's go to camera. Now, this is where it gets really interesting. There's some presets up here. We've got isometric views, which are quite cool. And again, again, if you're doing presentations, you might want to think about that. For example, uh, that's, that's one. Oops, I went all the way through. And you can see what isometric means. It means uh, it's not in perspective. Um, we've got skybox east, okay, west, up and down. So do experiment with all those. Let's get myself back into position. Uh, and you've got, of course, custom presets so you can actually set your own um, uh, camera stars. Uh, camera to player or center camera, they're fairly obvious. That's where the player was standing when I le first left that world. Um, and I can also center the camera as well. So that's that center the camera back to its origin. So let's move back through the world 
uh, let's go back to camera to player. So that's a nice, a nice image. Projection, standard parallel fisheye, fisheye like that. Well, that's pretty cool actually. <laughs> then maybe we'll leave it on fisheye or panoramic. Whoa, even weirder. Or a slot, which is oh, that's quite cool. I think we'll go for just a standard for the time being. Uh, field of view. That is zoom, so we can either zoom right out or zoom right in. So we'll kind of have it a little bit out like that. Depth of field. Now, for those of you who know your photography, your depth of field is that is that that almost uh, you know some things work which are very close to you can be in focus, and some things further away can you be in a blur, and vice versa. So you've got a kind of a depth of field. Is this is some uh, focal point, um, a midpoint where you can, will, that will be in focus, and everything else further or, or, or nearer will be in blur. So this is kind of cool. At the moment it's in infinite, but if we were to do this, for example, let's let's do, do this. In the preview, you can see a preview of uh, of its kind of everything is now in blur. But if I push this forward, we can see. Now let's try and make so we can see that this um, brick wall is now kind of more in a focal plane. And if we push it further back, let's try and get the house in focus. Oops. Oh, there it was. There it was. So let's just depth the field. Let's push it. Oh, that's quite nice. So now what we've got is we've got the road is in blur and the house is in focus. So we'll keep it at that because that's quite fun. There's also got an autofocus thing. And again, do have a little go with it, see what that does. The next one is post processing. Exposure, we can make things like lighter or darker. And we've got post processing mode. So we can either have none or a gamma correction or a tone map. Uh, I'm not really sure what tone map does. Uh, I just generally leave it on gamma correction and leave it like that for one. Again, visit the wiki. It's got an amazing wiki and it's got amazing examples of what you can do. Advanced render threads. This is about, again, the power of your computer. I generally leave it as it is. Okay. Um, and I leave the water world mode off unless you're doing a ship. Now ships in the water world mode would be extraordinary. And again, water height is 63. So it's looking, what it will do is it will flood the world uh, with water. And of course we're underwater at the moment. So let's not do that. Okay. Uh, so it floods the water. If you've got a water height of 63, which is generally what the water height is on most worlds, uh, then it will it'll actually render it as a sort of a almost liquidy uh, kind of um, effect. It looks really, really cool. And also it's got, um, it's got shadow as well. Um, then there's help. And again, we've got some holding shift makes the basic movement keep move uh, at one tenth of a of normal distance. Uh, J will move the camera backwards for 100. Oh, let's try that. Whoa. And K will move the camera forward 100. So that's really useful. Okay, so I, and you will toggle full screen mode. Oh, well, I haven't tried that yet, but we shall see. Let's just try this as it is. So I'm going to go back to general and I'm going to just press down here start. And you can see immediately it's started to. Uh, you know, render time in the zero hours. So it's rendering uh, little frames of a thousand. So it's going to, you know, keep rendering for a, for a thousand frames. And essentially, I think what it's doing is it's actually using um, uh, a render algorithm where it's, it's thinking about light and the light is bouncing off certain objects and bouncing around. Uh, and that's what's going on in the advanced section. So it's got, it uses ray uh, rays of light virtual rays of light that bounce around these objects and create shadows. Again, if you want to interest in mass, most computer graphics programs that do three-dimensional things work in this way, and somewhere, somewhere or another. Uh, and this is how you can produce really amazing pieces of artwork using your Minecraft builds. Uh, you know, the amount of kind of realism uh, that you can get with this is stunning. And you can see the background there, that kind of, uh, you know, yellowy kind of uh, sunsetty colors to the sky up there as well and again if we were to put in our our clouds we would have clouds up there too so again it's really up to yourself and you can see inside there these little um hot speckles these um yellows and reds those are are being caused by um the um there's glowstone in these uh, in these areas and those what were, were coming through with the enable emitters, and I just did push it down a little bit. Uh, over time, because we've only done 75, 
uh, over time these little spots, these hot spots, actually produce quite a lovely effect and all you have to do is just leave this going for some time uh, and it will get better and better and better until it's literally uh, of photographic quality. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just um, uh, I I'm going to just leave that to go for a while. Uh, Once you've had Chunky running for a little bit, uh, we've had ours running for about 10 minutes now and 17 seconds, uh, and it's got to a stage where I think actually that's that's pretty marvellous. What I want to do is I want to save this this picture. I want to save this image. Uh, so what I'm going to do over here, I'm going to go over here and so I'm going to say save current frame. So I'm just going to click that. And again, this is my childhood phone, and I'm going to just pop it on my desktop and press save. And that's now saved that as a PNG file. And we can obviously use that within uh, different um, on a website, or we could use it in a Word document, etc. etc. Uh, you know, even put it on a t shirt if we wanted to. So that's how we can do that. If we want to stop it, uh, we can actually pause the render. Uh, resume it later on or just press reset if we think well I like that picture now I want to try a different uh, a different render so I'm going to reset the whole thing and then we can go back into camera we can uh, change our depth of field for example and we can move around make sure you've actually got the window selected move around and let's change some sky things and then we'll volumetric fog and let's put, um, let's reduce that there. Oh, well, let's actually make this really bright. Let's see what happens there. And uh, push the altitude of the sun down a bit. And press general and go back and start and do the whole process all over again. You could kind of see immediately here what we've got because I put volumetric fog in. We're getting a very foggy day. Um, and even this light being emitted out is, is starting to be emitted, and we can kind of see. Um, we can see how that's working. So we've got let's uh, let's and I'm like mm, I don't really like that. Let's reset that. Go back to sky. Let's get rid of atmosphere. Let's press start again. See what that does. Maybe no, I don't. Again, I, 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 maybe I don't want that. I, it's the fog that's a problem. So I'm going to pause it. Uh, oh no, I'm going to reset it. I'm going to get rid of fog. I'm just maybe just enable atmosphere. Maybe enable clouds as well. And there we go and press star and see what that looks like now that looks pretty nice but again this tree is overshadowing there so maybe I'll just reset that again so you can kind of quickly preview what's going to happen and that's kind of uh, that's one of the ways that I let's push the sun around here so it's in front maybe even uh, no I quite like it low press star kind of a sunsetty feel to the whole thing well look at that okay so that's quite nice uh, and we we can get let that that run and run and run. So you know, um, with Chunky, I think it's really useful to experiment with your shots. Just do a quick preview, and it, you know, and I'm uh, you know I'm using an iMac, it's got fairly reasonably powerful, but even sort of slower computers can kind of cope with this as long as they've got their own graphics cards. Uh, that's what we're kind of after. And again, as long as you're um, as long as you've got time to spare, uh, it really is depending on the processor power. Um, so. Uh, what I'll do is I'll have some examples to show you, so I'll, we'll just do a little kind of slideshow of different examples of what Chunky can do. And uh, thanks very much for listening. Again, if you've got any questions or, or, um, or, or queries, do leave them in the comments below and remember to subscribe. And also, if you're interested, follow me on Twitter as well. Until next time, thanks very much for listening. Bye-bye.